Ah, I really suck at golf and it takes something very special to get me out of bed to come and do this. So this guy who got me out of bed is, has a knack for telling great stories. So he told me a yarn to get out here. The cool thing is, he's just as bad at golf as I am. Let's go have a look. For me, um, you know, people often ask you, they ask you uh, what you do, you know, and you, 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 yes, you're a journalist in as much as you report on things that are happening, but to create a real impact, you, you've got to tell a story. So when people ask me, you know, what do you do? Um, I, I'm a storyteller. It's, it's right there in my Twitter bio. It's right there in my Instagram bio. I'm a storyteller. So, and, and, and you think about like, okay, but what, it, what does it mean to tell stories? And if you take it right back to stories that you tell your kids or, um, you know, kids have the shortest attention span, you know, they, 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 they don't like to focus. So you've got to be engaging. So when you're telling a story, you're telling a fairy tale, for example, it's got to have colorful characters in it. It's got to have uh, um, a little bit of action. It's got to have a little bit of suspense. And most importantly, the characters have to be relatable. So when I tell stories, uh, we did a series on, on, on the homeless of Cape Town called The Dignity Project. The important thing for me was not to focus on the circumstances, not to focus on, um, you know, who was right and who was wrong, who was doing enough for the homeless people and, and do homeless people deserve to be on the street? And you can look at them very judgmentally and say like, oh, well, you just don't want to work, you know, just work harder and everything will be fine. It's not as simple as that. When you speak to someone, when you humanize that person, when you, you give that person a face and a name and a background, and now I understand, okay, where you're coming from. Now I understand what your motivating factors are. You start to understand that, oh, actually, you know what, I've not got that lived experience. So for me, the important thing, the most important thing about storytelling is about making something relatable, making the subject of the story relatable, make the situation relatable, paint a picture so that I can understand what I would have done. I, can, I start questioning what would I have done in that situation. And that to me is the key about telling a good story. Um, I do think that, um, you know, what's very important when you're dealing with media and you're dealing with multimedia and digital and, and online storytelling is very interesting because it is a multimedia format. So you need to understand the multimediality of the format and the non-linearity of the format. You know, when you're reading a storybook, it goes once upon a time and finishes with uh, happily ever after. In digital, it's different. You need to consider when you're telling the story schematically, which medium works for which message. So what element of the story would be better told in a graphic? What element of the story would be better told in audio? What element will be better told in video? What elements will be better conveyed uh, in, in pictures? And then your text is last. Your text is literally the headline and some filler. Um, because the, the, the text, when you're talking about digital media, it's, you know, you, you can flex your muscles, really. That doesn't mean there's no space for long form. I'm going to come back to your earlier question about have we lost our way a little bit as the media. And I think what's important to note is that as media, you know, we used to just tell people what happened. We were, we were media of record. It was just, you know, it's in the paper, that's what happened. You can no longer just tell people what happened. It brings me back to this, this, uh, this saying, where you say, um, you know, if you, you know, people will, will, will forget what, they, what you do for them, they will forget what you say to them, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And that's important. Don't just tell me in the media what happened. Tell me how I should feel about it. Evoke an emotion in me because that's going to sit with me. That's going to make me remember. I'm going to pick up a story about a homeless guy. And instead of me thinking about what a drain he is to society or how he craps on somebody's stoop in the business, I'm now going to understand that oh, this guy lost everything because of one bad decision. I could have made that bad financial decision and ended up on the street like that. When I feel that and when the writer feels that and they convey that story, when, when, when you tell that story to somebody else, the listener now can feel that. And that is what sits with them, is that emotion. So we've lost our way because we're telling people what happened 
and we're not informing them, we're not creating an emotive response uh, uh, in them. So for me, there are, there are some key elements, right? One of them is relatability. Your story needs to be relatable. I need to understand, often as a, as a young journalist, I'd pick up a financial newspaper and I would not understand at all what they were talking about the budget breakdown. If you can relate it to me, if you can make me understand that this increase in the repo rate is going to impact how much cash in my pocket I'm going to have at the end of the month, it's going to sit with me more, right? So relatability is very important. The other element is utility. Utility is how useful is this information for me. So the relatability ties into the utility because now when you tell me um, the petrol price is going up, okay, yeah, fine, that's information. But how, how, how is it useful to me? Now you can say to me, okay, if you fill up your tank, um, it's going to cost you X number of rands more, or better yet, if you try and work out the city of Cape Town's complicated rates and electricity structure, you'll know that if you buy 200 rand now, you're going to get less units out than if you bought four times 50 rand, right? So that utility, that usefulness, I'm going, okay, so I'm not going to buy 200 rand, I'll buy 50 rand now, and I'll buy 50 rand next week, and I'll buy 50 rand the week after, because that information is now useful to me. And the third element, which is very important, is the emotional response, right? The story has got to evoke an emotional response. And there's a very cool uh, um, uh, 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 mixing gut feel with a bit of technology. So there's a, a, a publisher in, in Singapore at the moment that's developed an AI that measures the emotional response on a scale from joy to anger, because those are the two um, sort of uh, 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 pinnacles of, of emotion, right? So anything along that line, they plug this headline in, if it ends up in the middle, the AI spits it back out and the journalist or the sub has got to come up with a better headline. Can you create an, a feeling of joy or do you create a feeling of anger? And anything close to those will get you your, your emotional response from your reader. So some of the best stories haven't been told yet. And if I listen to Lance Witten carefully, he reminds me that we have to listen and to watch carefully for them. And what we must always bear in mind is that we're not writing for other journalists or other content creators, we're writing for our audiences. For more content like this, visit loudhousemedia.co.za. I'm Gesante Bader.